looking at the Atlantic division specifically, let's start with the Florida Panthers. So the big fish, obviously the best player acquired at the trade deadline was Claude Giroux. Okay. Pending unrestricted free agent. Still a really good player. Dude just won MVP at the all-star game. I know it doesn't mean a lot, but he's 34 years old and he still has a lot left in the tank. He's not the Claude Giroux from five years ago, but this guy's still a good player. Um, And they gave up a first round pick, third round pick, Owen Tippett, who they drafted 10th overall in 2017. So that that entire package they gave up for, for a rental. And then they also picked up Ben Sherratt from the Montreal Canadiens, which I thought was probably the worst deal of the entire trade deadline. You had laughter in your voice there, Bruno, already. Just, just a disaster. They traded a first-round pick, fourth-round pick, and prospect Tyler Smolanik for Ben Sherratt, who's also a rental. So just looking at the Florida Panthers first, what are your thoughts on these moves? Because the way that I look at it, they're they're the highest scoring team in the NHL. They're scoring over four goals a game. They're literally one of the best offenses of the last like quarter century. Mm-hmm. And they picked up Claude Giroux and it, I'm, you know, it's going to help them score, I guess some more goals, but does that really matter for this team? And now they just lost Aaron Ekblad who's yes. up with a, with, with an injury. He's on LTIR. Ben Sherrod sure as hell isn't going to fill his shoes. So <laughs> I don't know, man. What are your thoughts on what on what this Panthers team did? It's it's exciting what they did because they emptied the cabinet to get better. Now, if I'm not mistaken, they don't in the next three seasons now after what they've done, they do not have a first round pick and they have one second round pick. So one pick in the next two rounds uh, over the next three seasons. And there are people quick to point out that the NHL should put some rules in with regard to that. Like the NBA has rules that you can't just like clear out the cabinet of draft picks to get better now. But I look at Florida's situation and we can get into this later with other teams and where the Leafs fall here, but this is a year for Florida. And I I don't mean this to sound condescending, but it's the Florida Panthers. Okay. It doesn't come very often that, they have an opportunity like this. Heck, it doesn't come very often for many teams, let alone a very small team like the Florida Panthers. Okay. Things are gelling. Well, guys, they picked up are having great years like Bennett and Duclair. So I appreciate them going for it. I really do. It makes it more exciting for everyone watching, but this may come back and punch me in the face, but I don't see it. The Ben Sherratt deal was, to me, a total panic. It was that thing of everyone's telling you what your problem is. And maybe you know what your problem is and you want to address it. And you just did like that obvious thing that everyone thought you were going to do. And you went overboard trying to accomplish it. Jay Fresh. (laughs) Uh, I love Jay Fresh on Twitter. Anyone not following him, you got to follow him. He posted uh, some videos of Ben Sherratt during the Leaf series last year because he was shitting on Ben Sherratt and what was traded for him. And the take coming back the other way was, well, you got to watch what he did in the playoffs against Toronto. You have to watch that to really judge him. And that's what Florida's after. So Jay Fresh took the time to cut every play into one video that Ben Sherratt was involved in, whether it was in the offensive zone, the defensive zone, laying ahead. It was like 30 or 40 minutes, I mean, seven games of every play he was involved in. I kid you not. I kid you not. Every third to fifth video was a mistake. Was him missing an assignment or not getting the puck out or getting beat. I'm not going to beat it on the bush here. And I've watched the guy live a lot, being from Ottawa. The Canadians are in town a lot. I go to quite a few games. I don't think he's very good. I think it's a compliment to call him average and to see what they traded for him. It's crazy. It's crazy. And and I think it's that thing of doing the obvious move that everyone's telling you to do and not having the balls or the brains to be maybe a little creative because I'll, I'll put it this way. People can talk about a need and addressing a need. Any team in the NHL, any team in the NHL, 
adds Ben Sherrod. Does it really make them better? Like, no. what, what, like, what is he doing to your lineup? Like how, like how you mentioned, okay, Giordano and yeah, let's pump the leads. Like Giordano won a Norris trophy a few years back. Giordano going into any lineup. Not only do you add Giordano, you're pushing guys down the lineup, which betters your depth. Like Ben Sherrod, like where would, where would I ideally want to see Ben Sherrod on the Leafs? I don't know. He's like, maybe I'm, a fifth or sixth defenseman on the list. I was going to say, like, I'm not pushing out Riley, Brody. You know what I mean? Like, what are we talking about here? You know so, what it is, Lepore? I think fans, especially Montreal Canadiens fans, because they came at me for this as well, for ripping the Sherrod deal. I released a video on TikTok and YouTube. And I, I was just, I couldn't believe that the Panthers gave up what they did for Ben Sherrod. I think they have these, these memories of him, you know, whether it's, pushing around Austin Matthews and you know, when you, you know, when it cuts to commercial break and you see like those slow-mo replays of like, you know, Somebody whether it's a dude like laying a hit or yelling at the ref or chirping somebody. And for whatever reason, I don't know what it is. These Habs fans specifically think that Ben Sherratt was this integral part of their run to the Stanley cup final to piggyback off of what you said, how Jay fresh posted those videos just to go over his stats Against the Leafs in that seven-game series with Sherratt on the ice, the Montreal Canadiens were outshot by 55 shots throughout the series and had a minus three goal differential. So an average of what is that? Eight a game. <laughs> they were outshot 125 to 70 yeah. with Ben Sherratt on the ice against the Toronto Maple Leafs. And then the entire playoffs, Lepore, the entire 22-game playoff run for the Habs, Ben Sherratt with him on the ice, the Habs were outshot by 81 shots and had a minus 10 goal differential. Yeah. Like this is a this is a number five or six defenseman who shouldn't be and, playing more than 15 or 16 minutes a night. And think about that deeper for a second, Bruno. That's not us taking a sample from the regular season. That's a playoff sample of a team that went all the way to the final. They were winning games. So he had numbers that poor while Montreal was winning games. Horrible, man. Horrible. That's a great stat, man. Yeah. So, you know, for the people who are, are claiming that, again, like he was this integral part of the Habs playoff run, wake up. Please just wake up and look at the numbers. Watch the guy play. I get it. He's a big dude. He's 6'3". He's 220. He's physical. He plays hard. That's all great. But I'm sorry. That dude is not going to be making a big impact on your team come playoff time. And especially now that that team has lost Aaron Ekblad, they just lost their number one defenseman. Can you imagine the Leafs at this point putting Morgan Riley on LTIR? That would be a devastating blow to this team. So I, I am very interested to see how this Florida Panthers team comes out of this over the next month or however, however many games they have. There's 20 games left in the season, something yeah. around there. I'm very interested to see how this goes because they just lost their number one defenseman they acquired Ben Sherratt, who, looking at the numbers, is going to actually make their decor worse. And they have no one to fill Ekblad's shoes. They picked up another forward, even though they lead the league in goals per game. So, again, I think Florida is a really good team, but I, I don't think they totally addressed the area of need that would have made them a better team. I'll ask you this, Bruno. Like Based on what I touched on before about how people seem to always – claim Leafs players off waivers because they've just naturally seen a lot of them because they're on TV all the time and they're getting all this press. Could that have been the case here? Is, Mont is Montreal, like as Montreal as a team as an, as, and as an organization, do they benefit? Do they benefit in this situation that everyone knows Ben Sherrod because yeah, a lot of, because Montreal is a popular team that we naturally know their decor had Ben Sherrod played for, the Nashville Predators and a similar deal was made. Would they have, would Nashville got, have gotten the same return as Montreal based on just the exposure that, and loudness he gets out of playing for the Montreal Canadiens? You absolutely nailed it, Laporte. If that Habs team had lost in the first round to the Leafs, there is no way in hell people are viewing Ben Sherratt the way that they view him. And there's no way in hell he's being traded at the deadline for a first, a fourth, and a prospect. There's absolutely no way that run to the cup final worked wonders for the, for the image of Ben Sherratt. 
Because if the Habs go out in, in the first round in five games, six games, even if they lose in that game seven, there's no chance people are looking at Ben Sherratt like they look at him right now. It's weird, man. It's weird. But like I said, like e- e- even organizationally, I-, I think it's true, man. And here I am insulting like management groups saying like, you're not paying attention. You're just focusing on names and brands. Like even when Luke Shen's name was coming up, like Leafs fans were always, were even feel, uh, falling guilty to it. Like, oh, you know, who knew we should get Luke Shen. I'm like, are we fucking serious now? Because he's getting pumped now. Cause he's having like an okay season. Like, give me a break. We had, we had him the first years of his career when he was like at most fleet of foot and we trashed him more than anyone. Well, we want him now when he's older and washed up again. Cause the name, cause he played for the Leafs at one point, everybody knows his name and like think something of him is hilarious. Yeah. The, just the, the psyche and how people think about a lot of these players is so interesting. And I think it really does come down to how much exposure do these players get? Which teams do they play on? Do they play on a big market team? And a lot of people know their name. Did they have a, a, you know, a strong run in the Stanley cup playoffs recently, all of these things factor in. And I think, honestly, I think the Panthers fell victim to this in this Ben Sherratt deal. And again, you could say we're being way too harsh because again, I will say the Panthers are a very good team. They might win the Stanley Cup. They could win the Stanley <laughs> Cup, but this is a team that hasn't won shit in the playoffs, hasn't won a playoff series since 1996, has not been battle-tested recently, whose defense core is questionable right now, whose goaltending is also pretty questionable. So you could say that Florida is this fantastic team, but really, honestly, I kind of view them in the same way as I view the Leafs. Like the goaltending Joe. isn't great. There's holes on defense. The offenses are very explosive. I think it, I honestly, if I was the Leafs, I'd want to play Florida in the first round of the playoffs instead of Tampa. I, w- I wasn't sure if I would have the balls to say that out loud, but I was thinking the same thing. Like, I don't give want me- anything to do with Tampa. Yeah, Florida. give me Florida. Give me Florida. Oh, totally. I- I'll ask you this. So the way it stands now, I guess, would Florida play? I mean, let's say, let's say it ends up being Florida-Boston. How would you feel about that series? I think Boston would be totally live to win that series. And, and yeah, the reason yeah. I say that is because I, I look at the Leafs of the teams that they have had trouble with in the playoffs recently. It's these defensive minded teams that play tight, that yeah. get good goaltending, can score timely goals. That's not a very good matchup for the Florida Panthers. Yeah. It's and almost Boston... like the Panthers and the Leafs need each other. Yeah. Like they need to play each other because one of them would finally win a playoff series and they have such similar styles. Whereas like you get the Leafs against Tampa. I think that would be terrible for the Leafs because Tampa phenomenal defensive team, Andre Vasilevsky star power. Yeah. And then same thing with Boston. I would not want to play Boston if I was the Florida Panthers as crazy as that might sound. So yeah. that's this, how I this, look at it right this now. Year, this year is so weird. Cause we talked about on the show before how like strong the East is at the top. Like we're talking about Boston as a wild card. Their, their pace has got to be like 110, 112 points. Like here, here you are, Florida. Let's say you win the president's trophy with 120 points and that's your reward. A team that can totally beat you in the first round. It's crazy, man. It's crazy. It sucks for them to have this good of a year this year, but I don't see, I, I don't know, man. And this may come back and slot me in the face, but I just don't see it with Florida. I don't see the mate. I don't. It, it, it all depends on who they play and of course how things go for them in terms of the bounces, but I'll say a hundred percent with it, without doubt that I would not give them a chance against the lightning. Like something would have to happen. It really in their favor, whether it's an injury or a couple bounces for them to beat the lightning over seven games. I, I've just seen this story play out so many times. You can be as explosive offensively as any team literally ever, but if you have trouble defending and your goaltending is not consistent, come playoff time, you are going to have issues. And we see it year after year. The same thing that happened with the Leafs last year. And listen, the Leafs got into a situation where they just couldn't score. Right. They, didn't really have, <laughs> they didn't really have too many issues defending and, and playing you know, and, and goaltending last year. But look at Colorado. They were extremely explosive last season, got bounced in the second round. How many times did we see those, those Capitals teams with Ovechkin win the President's Trophy and then get bounced early? How, f- even the, the Lightning, the year they had that 128-point season and got swept in the first round by Columbus. 
So the yeah. people who are just penciling in Florida, you know, into the second round, third round Stanley Cup final, pump the brakes. Because the last time I checked, this team is nowhere near one of the best defensive teams in the NHL. And their goaltending is still pretty sketchy. So yeah. if that team gets into a playoff series with a team that can defend and stop the puck, they're going to have trouble. Yeah. Like we mentioned Boston. I think the difference is lie with say a team that's strong offensively versus defensively is that, yeah, you put up big numbers. I'd like to see the actual like underlying uh, totals for this, but how I would envision it is that, okay, if you looked at the teams that score a lot of goals, I would think, yeah, that team scores more than anyone else in, to in totality, but I would think that there's going to be times throughout the season where it's erratic where, okay, they score five, but then the next game they score two. And then for three straight games, they score at least four, but then they score three over two games. Compared to a team that's strong defensively, I would guess that on the defensive side, it's just more steady. Yeah, it's and just maybe less that, volatile, right? Exactly. Like, like, I don't, for example, Florida, the number one scoring team in the league, can get shut out tomorrow. And nobody would be surprised, ran to a hot goalie, whatever, things didn't go their way, 0 for 4 on the power play, they didn't score a goal. Whereas if you looked at, say, the best defensive team in the league, if we turn on Sports Center and they got beat for six or seven, our eyebrows would raise and be like, how did that happen? What? Like, it'd be, it'd be confusing. So I'm not saying I know the numbers, but I'm going to guess that's the way they play out. And that's why what you're saying about the playoffs is so accurate. Yeah, and listen, like you said, it could totally blow up in our face and Florida could go to the Stanley Cup final, outscore every team, score four goals a game, and it's all sunshine and rainbows. But I'm just basing it on recent history, and you could even go back further if you want. Teams that are explosive offensively and aren't that good defensively tend to have issues in the Stanley Cup playoffs. So again, we'll see. We'll see how it plays out, Lepore.